gonna make a video about it. Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about key pairs and how you can move your keys from one wallet to another wallet. Specifically from a software wallet like Phantom, Solfre or whatever to a file system wallet that you can interact with with a CLI. So let's get started. Doop -doop -doop -doop. I think I'm gonna put myself here this time. Let's start the easy way. If you have a key, let's say you created one with Solana, Keychain, Grind, starts with, I'm typing this so often, it's like muscle memory, because you wanted to have like your address, say, I don't know. Let's go with a classic, Andy. And I want one of that, and I want it in that case. Let's go. There we go. Andy Q. Took a while because I was searching for four letters. And it only really worked in an acceptable time because it started with an A. But that's a whole different conversation that we can have about wallet address distributions. We might do that at the end of the video. For now, let's just say we have this nice key pair here and that's our file system wallet. Don't ever do this at home, but if I were to say more about this, this would be my key pair, right? So that's the integers, the bytes, the individual bytes written as a list, the individual bytes for my private key for this address. So this is what we call a key pair, even though it's not a pair, it's just a private key, but the public key can be derived from the private key, so Solana address from this, this would derive my public key. So that is the public key, which is not encoded in bytes anymore, like a byte list, like here, but this is already a base 58 encoded string. That's a very important distinction because that's what we'll need to do later. That's what we'll need to handle later. I can now interact with this wallet with the Solana CLI, as we just saw here, you know, I can do my airdrops on DevNet and, and whatever. Just like, I want to airdrop myself to Sol, and I want that key, and I want to do it on DevNet, because it won't work on mainnet. Um, gotta scroll down, there we go. Now I have two Sol, so Solana balance with this key and on DevNet will tell me I have two sol, right? So that's the file system wallet that we can interact with. Now, this thing, the private key, we can import in Phantom or whatever wallet we use. So, so I have a bunch of wallets here in my Phantom and I already sorted out quite a few before making this video. And here I can add a new wallet and I can import it from a private key. That's what I want to do. That's my private key. The new version of Phantom actually uh, has this as a password field, which is uh, good. And I say this is my whatever Andy's wallet. Don't actually use that because I already exposed my private key. And if we were on DevNet, we would see that we have two sol here, right? Okay. Now the usual use case is that people create their wallet on Phantom or Soulflare or wherever, like this, or like um, create a new wallet like this, and then, you know, I've already created quite a few, and then they want to export their wallet. So we have a wallet. So most common use case, you have your wallet and you want to export it and get access to it in the f as a file system wallet. So you can go here, and say export private key. You know, once again, put in your password and then it will display, again, don't do this in front of other people, don't show anyone your private key. But this is just a demo. I can afford to lose my private key to you. I'm okay with that. So this now is my private key in base 58 encoding, right? So with this, I cannot just start up a file system wallet 
I need to first decode this to a byte list. Now, how do we do that? Well, there are online converters where you can put in a string like this. Actually, I should not showcase this either, such that you know that you're not supposed to do that. Um, and you want your result. Ah, there we go. That's it. Also, don't do this at home. There we have it. Now, before you actually do this yourself, don't do this yourself. Let me tell you that this is not the right way to go about this. I would not suggest that you use an online tool to decode your private key. Why? Because we don't know what that online tool does in the background. Maybe it sends all the things that are converted to some external server. We don't know and you really want to keep your private key safe. So don't use any online tools for that. Better have an offline execution. I, for instance, wrote myself a Python script and that's what that looks like. But you can also do it in whatever language. Let's, I don't know, maybe you don't have Python. Maybe you want to do it in TypeScript. There. How about that? Let's steal the code from here. So we could either use this library or we can even have a look at the source code. Let's go the easy round first. So let's go with that. We can put in our private key here and then we just decode it. Then we need to, of course, install the package, install that. Now we've installed that. Now it should find that hopefully you can also try and import that. Okay, fine. TS node, my converter. There we go. Look at that. And we have exactly our private. Uh, I'm again in the way. Why? Not a good position down here either. Yeah, but that's exactly our private key from the 77 to the 42 that we created earlier here. And that's what we can now export either like this and then into a file or we let the program do it, build a string or we literally make a list. Hold on. Oh, push. That's what it's called in TypeScript. Byte list. See what that gives us. There we go. That's what we want. And this we can now JSONify and that we can then instead of printing to console, write to a file. And of course you can um, name this as you want. I'll now call it key.json. So if I run that, it tells me my private key file was created. And if we have a look in here, we now have a key.json. And if we more on the key.json, then we get the same as if we more on the Andy that we created earlier. So this is how you can create your file system wallet from your web browser wallet or whatever other software wallet that you have. I mean, you can skip the entire programming part. Uh, I can uh, give you this source code and also this source code. Again, I recommend that you don't do it in an online converter. This is just not particularly safe, but essentially you just need to base 58 decode that string and boom, you have the bytes. And with that again to show Solana balance at DevNet with my key JSON, this will also show me my two sol now. Pretty cool, eh? So that's how we get from system file wallet to software file wallet and back to system file. Wallet. Pretty easy, right? Super easy, super easy. I'm gonna, so essentially this is the important part and then it's just a bit of formatting. Yes, one more thing before I go, because of course those things here, you should just handle your day-to-day -day business, like your NFT flips or whatever you do. And for actually storing your wealth, use a ledger or some other hardware wallet. Because those file system wallets and the web wallets, they're just not as safe, right? Because like, if somebody interferes the private key somewhere, like this stuff or this stuff, then they have access to everything in your wallet. And you don't want that. It's usually a better idea to use a ledger wallet. 
And while we're at it, when we talk about ledger wallets, right? So in my Phantom or my software, I can add a ledger wallet by connecting a hardware wallet. For that, I need to log in here real quick. All right. And then it shows me the derivation paths. I can choose the path that I want to derive from. This just allows you to create more wallets. So just for fun, where do we go? There. I like this one. The ADGR. Put it up. So I'm just going to add this. What was the other address here? I don't know. And then here I see my ledger address. Now here, obviously, you cannot export your private key anymore because the private key is just on your ledger. If you still want to use that key for the Solana CLI, you can do so by providing the correct derivation path. Don't know how to do this by heart, but you can Google it. Using hardware wallets on the Solana CLI. Yeah, via USB and then ledger and then the wallet ID. And we need to give it the derivation path and all paths already have the 44501. So we don't need to add that, but then the 00, zero or the, I think zero, eight or so I took. So let's try this. Let's not do with balance. Let's first go address to check that we get the right thing. And our key is the USB ledger, but maybe I don't need that if I only have one device connected. Let's try without the key is zero slash eight. I don't need to harden it. I don't even know what that means, but the thing is the hardening and, and with our keys, that doesn't make a difference on this elliptic curve. Nope, that was not it. I think Phantom uses a different way to derive them than for instance, Sulfur and the CLI. We had it at slash zero, hold on. Yeah. And then that is the first address in this list. That's where I'm editing Ableists, by the way. So better not do anything stupid here. Okay. Admittedly, there's still a lot of things I don't understand here. So let's go the easy route. But just to show you what I can do, connect my first wallet. So this here, there we go. So the first one, this one, I can add. This is where my ape lives. This one I can import. That's the one at just zero. Yeah, that's it. I don't like, I don't understand this fully yet, uh, how those uh, derivation paths work, but that's not the focus of this video. I just wanted to show you how to get one wallet somewhere else, but with Ledger, it all gets a bit more complicated. So I can check the balance of this thing and I could do stuff like Solana config set key pair to this as well, such that then I can do stuff like SBL token accounts. And here, don't know what that means, but oh, there are auxiliary accounts. Ah, it's not on my associated token account. Is that, is that what it means? No, because I was putting it somewhere, I think for the gangbang. But anyway, let's not play around with this because my ape is too, too valuable. But yeah, the, the gag, that's, that's my ape. That's my, uh, there, that's my DJ ape. That's how you can run stuff with a CLI with your ledger. Don't ask me uh, how that thing with the derivation part, uh, paths really works. If you do know it, uh, please let me know. Uh, join me in the Discord and tell me. That would be cool. But... I really hope that you learned something today. Key points to take away. Get your file system wallet to a web wallet. Just copy the key also to a, you can also do the same like with your phone. It's like the same if you have Phantom installed on your phone, you can also import and export private keys here. I'm not gonna do that, but it is the same with, with the phone wallet. Export the private key at a secure location, convert it from base 58 to a byte list, and then with this byte list, you can make the Solana CLI work. Also, if you're using valuable stuff, 
get yourself a ledger or something and uh, you can also run the CLI with the ledger. Although I would then start with deriving a new key with the ledger like uh, 0 slash 69 for instance and then start from there. Yeah. Cool. I really hope that uh, I don't get so many questions about that topic in the Discord anymore. Now, if you still have questions, come on, ask them. I hope I have the time to answer them. And otherwise, I shall see you in the next video or at Paris Hacker House because yes, I'm gonna go there. See you then. Oh yeah, also check out those videos and uh, subscribe and like and all the good stuff. See you around.